Then after the workshop, we walked north towards the Jade Emperor Pagoda, which was sort of one of the big things that people go see in Ho Chi Minh City. It was one of the big tourist spots that you want to make sure you don't miss. Anytime you go to a city, there are like certain things that you do. Mm -hmm. and so this was one of them that we decided we were going to go see. Um, so it was kind of a far walk. We got to the pagoda, which was probably like three miles from our apartment. So we saw like a whole bunch of the city in between. And it was like super, super crowded and there were like turtles and birds and all kinds of craziness going on. Tons of incense. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't, so this is kind of where I wished that we had a guide almost because when Ryan was taking us through the temple in Taiwan, he was able to explain absolutely everything and just tell us what was going on and what we were seeing and, and what oh, we were smelling. And, and Kelsey was being a really <coughs> good sport at this point. And I, am well, she, I she had a sprained ankle, remember? She had a sprained <laughs> ankle and she was limping through three miles of the city going, should mm. we take a cab? <laughs> I was um, being pretty stubborn. chaotic and then after that we went to a crab 
place that we had seen. We went to a, a yeah, it I don't know what to call it, a crab place. It was on one of the Bourdain shows. Yeah, it was from Anthony Bourdain's and TV show. So I think it's called Quan 94? I think it was called Quan 94. That's yeah, where they wrote down. so this place is kind of funny because it was so successful. There's another establishment that's like either right next door or one shop down mm -hmm. that tried to copy the name right, they and opened branding up and everything else. <laughs> because I think after Bourdain went there, so many people saw it, so all the tourists decided, like us, decided that we should go there. And so they, they <laughs> had a copycat shop, which is just kind of a funny, like what a... What an idea. <laughs> so this is another instance where having a celiac food cart would have come in extremely handy because I got gluten. Yeah, um, I didn't I'm eat everything there. I think we ordered two dishes and I kind of nibbled at one of them. So and we ordered crab claws? Yeah. Which and I then think we ordered fried them. rice. And I think the crab claws had soy sauce on them. Mm -hmm. And the soy sauce used in most of Vietnam is wheat gluten first. Just like the soy sauce that's everywhere. Just like here. It's but not it's tamari, it's actually. It's not tamari. Soy sauce. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was the crab claws because I think they were marinated in something. It was very good and it was very tasty, mm -hmm. but yeah, I got gluten. So. And then, but so we didn't know that right away. Um, but so after the crab place, then we walked over to the lunch lady, which we also saw on a Bourdain show, and he like he raved about this one so we definitely had to go see it this was kind of over by the river yeah. a little bit and it was a little bit of a, like we walked through some areas that were very not touristy and we there were a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> with some of them there were roosters running around and well they were like diseased chickens yeah like they very unhealthy animals there were no sidewalks in some of the areas we were walking through some unsavory stuff and it was like dried out and desiccated anyway we finally so this is we were walking through a place that I don't think many people walk through because they're smart and they take a cab. Yeah, so we had walked up to the Pagoda and then the lunch lady was over here and we kind of, there was the area in between that we walked through. There was like a cute little street that we walked down and it started getting nice again. And yeah, so we went back to the lunch lady and she was kind of closer to the touristy stuff, or at least the more, more touristy stuff that was closer to the river. I don't know which part, you can look at, I forget what district is in or what yeah, where it was. Yeah, it was like the northeast corner of the main part yeah. of Ho Chi Minh, so, near the river. Let me see, do I have notes about this? So we got, we got soup, very interesting experience is what, I, is what I wrote down. So we sat down and within like 15 seconds of sitting down at the lunch lady's table, like three or four different people had brought us like 10 plates of food. It felt like we went from an empty table with just some condiments to like, and then suddenly there was more food than you could eat. And so we kind of, we got smart and we read up on this. Well, we, we eventually and figured it out because... So I think we went to another pho place that was really well known before this mm -hmm. on a different day. I didn't talk about it earlier. Well, I, think it, I think it was later. Actually. Oh, maybe it's later. Yeah. Well, so we read about this on TripAdvisor. And so apparently the deal at a lot of places in Vietnam, is, and Lunch Lady is one of them, they will bring food to your table. So she's got like these guys helping her. And so when you sit down, you're going to get a plate full of spring rolls, you're going to get, uh... There was the... Leaves? No, it's, it was like, it was like dough or on pork, or what yeah. was the pork sticks that you were getting? I don't really know what they were. It wasn't really my yeah. jam, so I didn't... Well, eat I didn't any. eat anything but dough. No, well, you said that you ordered the same thing at the pho place the next day that you did. I don't remember what it was. Huh. Well, I don't remember. What the, anyway, so the deal is, like, they bring all this stuff, and if you... You, you eat so, it and you're so charged things, by the piece. For things like, so for the soup, obviously, we're there to eat the soup, so she put the soup down in front of us. It was just whatever soup she had that day. No idea what it was. Um, so that was sort of, you know, and it was I really think we were going to get charged for that no matter what. Oh, yeah. But then when they put the plates of summer rolls or spring rolls or whatever other, like, finger food, I think there were, like, some shrimp things, you only, like, if you eat one summer roll, then you only get charged for it as one summer roll, even though there's a plate of, like, six of them there. And so, so you the only get charged for what you eat. If this is this is something that just blew my mind once we figured it out later, is if they put this plate down on my table and I don't eat it, or if I take a piece, then when we leave, that plate is taken and then put on another table. We figured this out at one point because we um, ordered some finger food like that at a pho restaurant. We got pho and something else. And they reached and over they, and grabbed it off of someone. And they grabbed it from someone. another table and put it on our table. And we were like, wow, cultural difference. Very much a cultural difference. Yep. And so the lunch lady was really nice because, like, they set us down in front of her little cook stand. Like, right in and front of her. So the way this works is I'm basically a stomach on legs. 
And so there were things that I was paranoid about, and I don't think we talked about this, but the very first place that we went in Ho Chi Minh, I think we went out before we went to get pho, and we got some juice at a place. Yeah. And they put ice in the juice, and I was like flipping out about the ice. I was like, oh my god, I want this because I'm dehydrated, but I'm going to get sick. And we were we were nervous about the ice. And I think it's probably fine in a lot of places because they're used to tourists and they don't, you know, sick tourists mean no repeat business. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, Kelsey. But so there there are guidelines that we were reading about before we went of things to watch out for so that you don't get sick from eating random street food in Southeast Asia. And not like. A little As tummy upset, like six. Or. Right. So you don't like give yourself some weird disease that you, as an American, are not prepared for while you're on vacation or your honeymoon. And so I'm a stomach on legs, and I sit down, and I'm like, well, lots of foreigners eat here, and so we're fine. And Kelsey is like looking at this scene, going, there are wires going above. I where remember the suit I, I was is. tallying up like every single thing, and I don't, I don't want to go through everything because we are talking about the lunch lady. No, but it was fine. But, I, but I, so yeah, the food so it was, was like great. it was like thirteen out of fourteen like check marks that you want to be like okay, make sure they're not doing all of these things. All of those things are happening. So I sort of just flipped no, at the broth. Plus we didn't know like we didn't know if there was wheat in things or not. Like we didn't have our food things. cards. Right, so we, we were didn't just know totally if they could accommodate us. We were just totally winging and it and seeing how it went, and it was fine. It was fine, and like the thing is, I I was operating on the principle of thousands of tourists go through this lady's which is food fair. stall. Which is fair. Bourdain didn't die after he ate there. Yeah, um, although the crab plays... <laughs> I mean, that was mostly because we can't have anything with gluten in it. That I would have... I'm pretty sure that was what happened there. Um, no, but the lunch lady was incredible. The soup was good. Everything there was good. And she was really sweet. I think she, like, undercharged us, and she was really worried about Kelsey because Kelsey wasn't eating any of her soup. I, was, I felt so, rude but, because she, we were right in front of her. She was like, so she was like, view of her. She was like, and I was like sipping at the broth. I think at one point I switched our bowls so I could like eat some of the the food in my. Anyway, it was funny and it was fun and I'm glad we went. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was a really fun little trip up there. The yeah, yep. I could have. We walked back a different we way, did. which was around the river, so we didn't have to deal with like the dusty, diseased, chickeny yeah, portion think, of town. I think we walked past the, a zoo, mm. and we walked past a park, and like some other parts of the city. So we got to see a lot on our walk home. I remember by the end of that, I it was a little bit much. It was a little bit far to walk with a sprained ankle, so I was really super exhausted by the time we got back to the hotel. But we made it back, and we rested for a little while, and then we had to pick up the laundry by, I think we dropped it off at like 6 p.m., so we had to pick it up at around 6 p.m., mm -hmm. it's a 24-hour turnaround. So we walked over to get the laundry, and on the way we stopped at a pharmacy and picked up an ace bandage, because at this point I had decided that, no, it wasn't just going to go away, and yes, I, if I was going to be walking six miles a day on a sprained ankle, I should probably wrap it up. So we picked up an ace bandage, and then we grabbed some water on the way home, and at that point it was really dark and we were pretty exhausted and I had a sore ankle so we decided to go somewhere nearby for food. I decided to go someplace close and we were staying in like the trendy expensive part of town. Yeah, they're, they're like two bike tires that are taped uh -huh. together with like fancy colorful tape. They don't always have the coat. Yeah. And some of the poorer areas that you're at. Yeah. Uh, they're just the bike tires. Um, I'm trying to figure out what that is all day. Yeah, we're, 
walk by the building, right? which is why we keep getting up to check and make sure it's still recording and stop and start, if that's weird. Did you start the recording? Yep. Okay. <coughs> We're also cooking dinner. Over there. Cooking dinner! So, 